In this video, I'm talking about the occlusion effect and why it may cause hearing aids to make your own voice sound hollow or loud to yourself. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. One of the first comments that new hearing aid wearers have when they're first being fit with hearing aids is, why does my own voice sound so much different with these hearing aids on? And there are two possible answers to this question. First is your voice is actually being amplified by the hearing aids themselves. And the second is the occlusion effect. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first possible culprit, which is your own voice being amplified by the hearing aids themselves. Now this is exactly what hearing aids are designed to do, is to amplify speech. And this includes your speech. And since you probably haven't heard your own voice at the proper levels for quite some time, it's probably going to sound a little bit different once you get it all back. Fortunately, this is something that new hearing aid users get used to pretty quickly. However, the second culprit, the occlusion effect, is an entirely different story. The occlusion effect occurs when the vibration of sound that's being created when you talk or when you chew on food is being bone conducted through your jaw and through your skull, and it can't escape through your ear canals because they're being blocked by something like a hearing aid. When this sound is trapped inside of your ear canals, it can cause your eardrums to vibrate, giving you a variety of different auditory perceptions, anything from a booming loud sound to a hollow sound to a sound of you talking in a barrel or the sound of you talking in a tunnel. You can actually give yourself the occlusion effect right now. If you actually take your fingers and plug your ears with them and you talk, that is the perception of the occlusion effect that's actually your own voice vibrating inside of your ear canals. So how do we determine if you have the occlusion effect? Well, this is a pretty easy thing to determine usually when fitting you with hearing aids. We can actually mute the hearing devices when we're going through your programming with you and actually have you talk. If your voice ends up returning back to a normal level or it even sounds a little bit muted, then you are not experiencing the occlusion effect. The second way would be to objectively measure the occlusion effect by using probe microphone measures, by using some of the same verification equipment that we would use to perform real ear measurement. Typically though, occlusion effect is often experienced more by individuals who have good low frequency hearing, but bad high frequency hearing thresholds, like you see illustrated on this audiogram. That is because the occlusion effect is typically experienced below 500 hertz. And the better your hearing at thresholds below 500 hertz, the more you'll perceive this bone conducted vibration. If you have bad hearing at the frequencies below 500 hertz, like you see in this audiogram, you typically won't experience the occlusion effect because the vibration of your own voice inside of your ear canals won't be loud enough for you to perceive. So the question then becomes, if you do experience the occlusion effect, is there a way to get rid of it? And the answer is yes. There are two different ways to reduce the occlusion effect. The first way is to increase the venting on your hearing aids. So whether you have a dome inside of your ear canal or whether you have a custom ear mold inside of your ear canal, if you can actually increase the venting of that, it will allow your voice that's being bone conducted to escape outside of that venting, reducing your perception of occlusion. This table illustrates the recommended vent size to optimize amplification and to reduce the occlusion effect. You can see that the better your hearing thresholds are at 500 hertz, the more open the venting should be. Give someone with lower than 20 dBHL hearing thresholds a 0.5 millimeter vent diameter, and they are virtually guaranteed to experience the occlusion effect. The second way that you can reduce the occlusion effect is to get an ear mold or a hearing aid that fits deeper inside of your ear canals. If you take away the space between your eardrum and the beginning of that hearing aid, it reduces the amount of space that your own voice can vibrate in. The less vibration of your own voice and the less you perceive the occlusion effect. Well, there you go. Seems pretty simple, right? Just increase the vent size and have that hearing aid go further inside of your ear canal. Well, it's not actually that simple. In fact, this turns into quite the balancing act. The larger that you make a vent, the less that you can actually amplify outside sounds before they actually leak out of your ear canal and recycle back through the hearing aid, causing a whistling, otherwise known as feedback. 
On the other hand, the deeper you go inside of an ear canal, the more sensitive that it becomes. So you can't necessarily just make a deeper seated hearing aid or a deeper seated ear mold. It might not be comfortable to the user. That being said, your hearing care professional should be able to identify the optimal balance between acceptable occlusion and optimal amplification by adjusting vent size and depth of hearing devices. At the end of the day, occlusion is always something that's on the mind of your hearing care provider. And the better your hearing care provider, the better they will be at making sure that the occlusion effect is a non-issue. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.